I'm here today with, uh, I have to get these names right, uh, John Zanos, uh, who is the chairman of the Open Power Foundation, and with Callista Redmond, who is the president of the Open Power Foundation. So, uh, John, uh, say something about your background and what brought you here to, uh, to, be, pr to be chairman. Sure, thank you. Um, as you said, I'm the chairman, but I'm also uh, a vice president at Canonical, a company behind Ubuntu. Uh, we've been involved with power and open power from the beginning, enabling uh, Ubuntu as a Linux operating system on it, and uh, most recently have had the opportunity to participate as chairman um, with Callista, and uh, we're at this moment now. Well, congratulations. Uh, comparing this with last year, it's been a, a huge increase in interest and, 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 uh, and uh, just the number of uh, announcements here. I think there are 60 announcements today, is that correct? There, there are a lot of announcements. We've got 59 new pieces of hardware out on the show floor, and we've had about uh, close to 80 different presentations that are uh, running in two different uh, pavilion areas, and as well as the uh, main tent. So we've got a lot to talk about, a lot of news that's hitting the street, and a lot of solutions that are coming to market. So let me take it up a level. Oh, why, why open power? What, what's different about it? Why, what's different, for example, than x86? What, what differentiates you from the rest of the uh, of the chip-producing uh, environment, well, uh, system-producing environment? Yeah, I think we've seen a couple things. First of all, clearly the marketplace is interested in choice. Um, you know, we believe that there's room for the marketplace to see three chipsets, right? You have open power, you have x86, you have ARM. Uh, and each one has certain attributes, but what we're seeing is that there's certain areas that open power is getting a lot of traction. We see it in uh, scale-out architectures, cloud architectures like OpenStack, um, data analytics, uh, research HPC, and a new area, deep learning. And we see that the developers in those communities want to make sure that they have the ability to put their application where they're most performant, and that's what we're offering as an opportunity to do so. Oh, I think the open and collaborative pieces are the most important ones that, that we can ascribe to. I mean, uh, if you look at um, you know the x86 architecture, it's fairly proprietary, it's fairly closed, and you have to really be you know part of a very small ecosystem and not very inviting to that open approach. Uh, open power is taking a very different approach, a very unique approach in uh, kind of bringing the ideology and the meritocracy of open source software down into the hardware layers. So that includes things like board designs, it includes chip design, it includes the entire paradigm from chip all the way through software. Great. Well, we've had a lot of good uh, announcements today. The ones that stuck out for me are obviously the Rackspace and, and, the, and the Google announcements. So could you uh, add a little more color to, to those? Yeah, I think we'll tag team on that. Both of them are, are very exciting. It's an opportunity to take the platform put it in the case of Rackspace in a scale-out environment where they're going to make it available to customers and those customers can put those applications that they think can be performant. Uh, Google obviously is talking about Power9 and announced some plans that uh, they'll continue to share over time, but it's just an indication of the model of openness and collaboration working and the adoption of alternative platforms. The one thing I would add to that is uh, some of the things that we've talked about at both the Open Compute Summit as well as here at the Open Power Summit, and we'll continue to talk about it at OpenStack, right? I mean, this is the cross-pollinization across multiple open communities, and that's really important. We all have limited energy, limited resources, but we want to continue to sort of build out the paradigm for uh, both end users as well as technology and software providers to really take advantage of that new business model. Well, uh, looking ahead, where do you see uh, Open Power being in uh, two years, five years' time? Well, what's the, what's your vision for where this is going to really uh, take place? I mean, the growth in the last year has been phenomenal. So, where do you see this being? So, um, you know, I think there's a couple things that we see that are really exciting. One is over the last three years, we've seen a growth in membership. So we're at over 200 members. I think where we see Open Power going is leveraging this concept of collaborative innovation and really supplying alternative platform choice. Um, we hope to see collaboration between the developer communities where we're bringing a big focus, the end user communities, and obviously the hardware engineers themselves. And 
improving the platform to take uh, supply what power can do and then having the developers really utilize what it's able to, to supply and then making that available to the end user. Great, and from an yeah, IBM I, perspective, what from, would you Well, add? so from an IBM perspective as well as an Open Power Foundation perspective, I get to wear both hats, <laughs> right? Um, you know, we're gonna go bold. We're gonna go 20% by 2020. That's where we're headed and, and that's the uh, the, sort of the penetration that we're headed for. That's, that's right, you're you're Linux, Linux workloads, that's, Linux workloads. yep. Wow, yep. that's an ambitious objective. Okay. And we're, we're well on our way. Great, congratulations. Okay, well, any last words? And can you pick out one thing that was uh, caught your eye on the floor or in, in looking around here, something? That yeah, so I, I think the most profound thing is, so today we launched the Open Power Ready program, today. We've already got 68 solutions that have been qualified as, as Open Power Ready. I mean, we haven't even launched it yet. So we are absolutely ready to go. We've got a lot of folks across the community that are developing for power, that are bringing solutions to market. That's because the demand is there. The demand is there from both the uh, consumption side as well as the, the producer side. Folks are really hungry for an open approach to their infrastructure. Excellent, John, you get the last one. Yeah, question. thank you. And I think, actually, it's, it's something that will happen tomorrow. We're actually gonna have an ISV working group which we're going to pull together all the ISVs that have expressed interest and start talking about the features and functions of open power. And we also have a solution working group coming. So we're driving this discussion up the stack, so to speak, not only at the hardware level, but the developers and the applications they're writing, and ultimately on how you weave that together in a group of solutions. As Callista pointed out, we already have a number before we even launch this effort, and we're looking forward to quite a few more. So well, what I'm hearing from that, it's it's software in silicon that you're aiming at uh, speeding up. Is that yeah, right? Uh, absolutely. I think what you need to think about is the collaboration is somewhat different than many other software foundations or just hardware uh, efforts like Open Compute. It's an intersection of the end user, the developer, and the hardware engineer. And that's, I think, something different. Great. Well, uh, thanks very much to uh, John Zanos and to uh, Callista Redmond. Yeah.